case three recovery and ICLS often look like one of the most complicated parts of carry operations. You're in the weather, it's dark, there's no horizon, and the radios are throwing a lot of information at you. I've provided a link for this reference. Make sure to save it, it's down in the comments. In this masterclass, we're going to slow everything down and walk it through together. We're going to break down the Marshall stack through the descent all the way to intercepting the needles and trapping on the carrier. By the end of this video, you'll understand not just what to do, but why you're doing it. So case three goes from intimidating to just another controlled recovery. Thanks for coming back to Geon Sims, where we break down tutorials and make tasks more intuitive and enjoyable. We'll be going through tag view visuals, breaking down the communications and illustrating exactly how to fly in the Marshall stack. Ready to get started? Let's go. The Marshall stack is the holding pattern we enter before starting our case three descent. It's racetrack shaped as you can see in the diagram. We'll fly a 030 degree heading and hold at the assigned radial distance and altitude. Here we will perform a gradual left turn until we reach 030. Let's go ahead and set up our instruments. First, press the TAC OSB and then EW. And then unbox HUD. When landing, the last thing you'll be wanting to see is electronic warfare symbology. So let's declutter that. Let's set up the right DDI for HSI. Press the OSB 13 button until the support page shows and then press HSI. Time for TACAN. Press the TACAN button and then turn on. Usually you'll have to press it a couple of times. Ensure transmit receive is selected and then go ahead and select the channel. In our case it's 74. Press enter and ensure X-ray is also selected. Box the TACAN and you'll see the beacon is locked. For a full TACAN breakdown, see my earlier TACAN video linked in the comments. Let's set up the ICLS. Press the ILS button and press on. Select the channel, in our case 11, and press enter. Now box ILS on the right DDI. However, let's turn it off for now as it's not required yet. What we have done is set it up for later and all we need to do is just select it. We're now approaching the point where we'll make initial contact with Marshall, the controller managing case three recoveries for the carrier. To make things easier to follow, I'll bring up a mapped out illustration at different stages throughout the video. So you can clearly see how each part of the Marshall stack and the comm sequence fits together. Before we check in with Marshall, take a quick look at the map to visualize our next movements. Note that the Marshall inbound course will be 110 degrees. And what we'll learn shortly is that the final bearing is 080 degrees. The Marshall stack is normally positioned 30 degrees off the final bearing, which gives us an inbound course of 110 degrees. Our carrier is heading due east on 090. Because the landing area is angled 10 degrees to port, the final bearing for landing is 080 degrees. Turning now to our heading of 030. And note that we're approximately 60 nautical miles away from the carrier. And very shortly, we'll be running through radials. Let's break down the comms. Because there's a lot happening here, Aircraft 2 will move out into open formation and now we'll reach out to Marshall to begin the Case 3 check-in. What does all this mean? Let's go through it. Marshall is the controller you're calling, managing all Case 3 recoveries, 017 is our aircraft's tactical call sign, our side number. 
Mums is the carrier. Currently, we're positioned at a 280 degree radial from the carrier, and we're approximately 60 nautical miles away from the carrier. Angels 23 is our altitude, therefore we're at 23,000 feet. Holding hands with 019, we're in formation with aircraft 019, so we're flying as a pair. We will need priority as we have 3,800 pounds of fuel remaining. This is the 280 degree radial. It's simply a line extending out from the carrier at a heading of 280 degrees. If you're on the 280 radial, it means you're somewhere along this line at whatever distance Marshall assigns. Let's cover Marshall's reply. Rough Rider is the flight name, and Marshall is confirming our check-in. Case 3 simply means a night or bad weather recovery. We're approaching CVN 74. Our final approach course to the carrier is 080 magnetic. Check your altimeter has the correct pressure setting. We will actually hold on the 290 radial with 25 DME and Angels 15. This is mainly for the purpose of the visuals. We will be coming from the radial of 260 for the final bearing of 080. Again, we'll come back to this later. We must start the expected approach time at zero, zero minutes past the hour. This is for the descent. Now we're heading to the Marshall stack, let's set up our instruments. Press and hold the course line toggle switch, and then simply press 110, enter. And here is our course line. Note here is the course line on the HUD. Let's navigate ourselves to the inbound course line of the Marshall stack. Workload increases quickly at this point. The next steps of the Case 3 sequence starts appearing here. This information also shows up on the HUD and will start to identify the individual parts. At the top is our current heading and our distance to carrier. The second is our ETA with our current speed and course. And the third means CVA for the carrier. We're moments away from joining the Marshall stack, where the controller takes over and begins guiding the flow of traffic. This is where discipline situational awareness becomes essential. The task load ramps up quickly as we fly manually and prepare to join the Marshall stack with the controller sequencing us in. Remember, airspeed, heading, altitude. Our DME will be 25 miles from the carrier when we make the initial turn for the Marshall pattern. This confirms that we've established the Marshall stack at 15,500 feet. 
25 miles, let's do a left turn at a 30 degree bank angle. You'll notice my bank angle here is a bit enthusiastic. Don't worry, TACVIEW will expose my mistakes in just a moment. Note the carrier group southeast of us. You'll see the results of my second turn in terms of discipline compared to the first. Keep the bank angle tight and you'll have great results. Don't forget airspeed heading altitude. Okay, just about to go ahead with the second turn. Thirty miles, so we'll go ahead and do another thirty degree left bank angle turn. This time we'll keep it tight and we'll see how it looks on the tag view. And once Marshall gives us commence, that's our trigger, we leave the stack and ride the descent profile toward the carrier. As a result of being sloppy, look how we're offset from the original inbound. And see how jagged that first turn is compared to the second. Not the end of the world, we just need to get ourselves back on course. Zero one seven, MNC, state three point zero. Altimeter two nine one nine degree. Zero one seven, radar contact two nine zero miles. Expect final bearing eight zero. Zero one seven. Zero minutes past the hour. Time to commence the approach and start the descent. The descent rate should be four thousand feet per minute, and airspeed should be maintained to two hundred and fifty knots. Switch approach means change to the approach controller. Zero one seven. Checking in. Fifteen miles. Zero one seven. Approach. Final bearing eight zero. Zero one seven. Flight zero one seven. Zero one seven. Roger. We're now flying at platform at five thousand feet above sea level. Heading towards the arc now at a heading of two zero zero. We should keep the descent rate down to 2,000 feet per minute until we reach 1,200 feet. Between 10 and 15 nautical miles we can go ahead and drop the arrestor hook. At this stage we'll still be maintaining the airspeed at 250 knots. Now we follow the 10 mile arc. It's a smooth constant radius turn at 250 knots. We're supposed to be keeping 10 miles from the carrier until we meet the final bearing. This is where the approach really starts to come together. Okay, it's time to punch in the final bearing. Press and hold the course toggle switch and then press 80 enter. Again, the course line will be visible on the right DDI. You can scale the distance by cycling through this OSB. Here you can see that the arc is a constant turn. I was using 200 as a reference heading. Now we'll perform the gradual left turn onto the 080 final bearing. At 10 miles, let's go ahead and box the ILS. And here will appear the vertical needle. We'll fly the needles at around 6 miles. Within 10 miles, let's put the gear down and start bringing our airspeed down to about 150 knots. Within 6 miles now, time to use the ICLS equipment. 
If we can keep that glide path indicator as amber, we're on speed. Always try to get the velocity vector up to the cross point of the ICLS needles. Keep the velocity vector between the upper part of that E bracket. First glide path. Zero one seven. On final approach, we fly the aircraft with pitch and power, not by pulling the stick. Here you can clearly see that I need to put more power in already. It couldn't be clearer. I'm on course, but I need to apply more power. Right now the glide path is misleading. I should be following the needles. The arrow tells me to power up and get to the cross point. At this point, following the needles is absolutely critical. Small deviations become big problems. Fuel is low. I do not want to be boltering. I get waved off here because I'm low on the glide path, drifting right at the center line, and the approach isn't stable. But I'm going for it anyway. 